Welcome to Celebrating Act Two. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome back to Celebrating Act Two and our, what I like to call our founder's blog. This is uh, Art Kirsch and John Coleman. Uh, we created Celebrating Act Two really for everybody over 50, for seniors, because there isn't enough good information, there isn't enough entertainment for us. Um, and today we have a very special topic. We want to give you an update on the coronavirus, COVID-19. We want to share with you what we know, what we don't know. We want to calm your fears. We want to let everybody uh, want to let everybody know where we are and give you an update, as it were, for the coronavirus. And speaking of updates, one of the things, Art, that I keep hearing is don't go into large crowds and right. hear you all in the middle of Grand Central Station. You know what? You're absolutely right. I should probably go someplace that is a little less congested. Uh, let's yes. Go, let's I'll see what I can do. Don't get so close to all those people. Oh, wow. I feel so. I feel so much better already. You're at the beach. I do. Okay. It's a better place to be. Because they said don't be closer than six feet to anybody, right? That's right. There, right. there we go. Those guys back there. And they're just sort of, they're hanging, they're going to hang forever long we're going to be on the movie. <laughs> I say that's 10 meters at least, yeah. yeah. And don't get your feet wet, by the way. That's not good for cold and things like that's that. That's a Bubba Meister. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> An urban myth. <laughs> so speaking of coronavirus and uh, things you're not supposed to do, let's start with the crowds um, because it, the whole advice has been uh, stay away from large crowds. And now... Um, as we see, geez, they're closing schools, they're canceling sporting events. People are to uh, taking toilet paper off the shelves like that's the only thing you can use to do that thing. Well, you know, that's that, that amazes me. All those people that are crowded into Costco or wherever it is and, and they're jammed in next to each other trying to get, you know, six years of toilet paper in one trip. Why don't they think to themselves, gee, maybe... I need less toilet paper and I need more to stay away from the crowds. Well, I think, Why don't they just wait? Wait. Don't they know that the, the alternative to that is you need three decent sized seashells. One that could be ready, one you could wash and be drying, and the other one just as a spare. Three seashells. That's all you need. Yeah. And you got to wash your hands a lot when you do that. <laughs> that method. That's right. the, the wash your hands. So, um, Art, there's been a lot of information about there. And my fear is that we're reacting from fear. I, I, what I want to do is share with our fellow seniors and and people who watch Celebrating Act Two, really a kind of a more intelligent perspective. Let, well, let's maybe not let's more be intelligent, smart about this. Not maybe more intelligent, but at least what we're doing. And since we've already lived about twenty years into the generation. Uh, Speak for yourself. That, well, I, I'm looking forward to my 55th birthday tomorrow. <laughs> okay, so so Alzheimer's is sitting in this forgetfulness. Okay, <laughs> you know where your car keys are tonight? <laughs> what's what the car? Uh, a, yeah. Anyway, um, among other things, uh, I know that, for instance, uh, I've decided not to go to movie theaters. Well, we've got Netflix and Prime and everything else. But it was kind of interesting that... Uh, all of these school closures and everything, which I happen to agree with, of where you have, well, we don't know exactly what's going on yet. We have tons of people who are uh, just quite frankly totally afraid not only to be in large groups, but to go out at all. It seems to and, me and that, that's, that's, that, what's that's where it's that's right. the overreaction. It, it, right. I, I have to give you a quick story. When 9 11 happened, my good friend and former business partner Dennis was in New York. Uh, lived in California, but he was in New York at a, a meeting, and 9/11 happened, and boy, you can imagine all hell broke loose there. He had a difficult time dealing with it, and getting out of town, getting back home. Yeah. But more importantly, his mother—he called his mother right away. She's in St. Louis, and he called her, told her he's safe. Don't worry about it. Um, but that wasn't the big problem. The big problem was for three to six months. His poor mother, who was in her late 70s, as I recall, um, had 
so much anxiety about 9-11. It wasn't about her son. She knew her son was safe. But it was on the news every day, every day. My terrorism and 9-11, we're learning more and the government's doing this. It literally was driving her crazy. So Dennis had to say, Mom, stop watching television. Turn off the news. Because while we get information from the news, it's their job to also get ratings. And, and how do you get ratings? Well, you get something spectacular head run. You know, now we've got 200 deaths. And it's always from... breaking news. As a matter yeah. of fact, oh. as a matter of fact. This, this a... is our opportunity Bre for breaking news. Breaking news. Give me the, give me the news. You got the wrong one up. <laughs> there. No, no, the wrong one. We'll do this again. Okay. Beep 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 beep. Perfect. Yeah. But beep 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 beep. Breaking news. Breaking news. You know. Okay. Actually, the difference between now and 9/11 is that there are CNN and Fox that are really cranked up, and most of the networks and MSNBC and even I was watching some of the news, business news. They're carrying the same stuff all over and over again. Everybody's all over. Right. So, and, and, and quite frankly, the local news is all over. And by the way, not, find, that it, not that it's not important. There was a, because this is I agree. It's so unknown that part of what's freaking everybody out is, is it, you know, 100 times more uh, fatal than the flu and so on and so forth? And we don't know. We, and we, you know what? Like a, a lot of this stuff with COVID-19, we just don't know. So why don't, I we, mean, why don't we talk about a couple of things that we've done that are... Good, good uh, idea. That we've changed. So... As you Let's know, compare you, notes. Yeah. Like, for instance, you just said something about the movies, right? Yeah. So I've decided that uh, although there, to me there's no experience like going into a, a, a dark theater. It's a shared experience with people you don't know and hearing the reactions and the sure. oohs and the ahs I, or, yeah. and the, the huge screen, uh, much bigger than the 500-inch screen I know you have in your living room, John. <laughs> uh, but still, it's... Um, it, it's a, a whole different experience. It, really, it is. And, and quite frankly, there's so much stuff between Netflix and Prime and Disney Channel when we have the grandkids over. Right. Why, to me, that's a risk that I just don't understand well enough that I don't need to put myself in that position. The same way that I'm beginning to change my attitude towards going to the gym, which I go to five days Good. a week and have a lot of friends. I have a secondary gym that's a 24 hour fitness. I have a secondary gym at the Y that at noon there's virtually nobody there. So I may just decide to use that one where I have at least a machine or two in between me and other people. I'm not chatting it up and I'm just making sure to wash my hands all the time and wipe the equipment down. You, you know, I think that's the smart reaction to this COVID-19 and to all the advice they're giving about, you know, staying away from large crowds. I I hope that most people aren't misinterpreting this and meaning they've got to lock their doors and stay at home. I hope they're doing what you're doing, which is being intelligent. Instead of going to the gym where you're shoulder to shoulder with people and you don't really know them, they might be coughing, they might not be. Uh, you're going to a gym where, you know, every other machine is empty. You're going at a low uh, traffic time and you're still getting out of the house. You're not isolating yourself to right. that big a degree. I think I think that's the smart approach. And I don't think it's smart when people go to Costco or Target or whatever and spend, you know, spend two hours among hundreds of other people shoulder to shoulder trying to clear the shelves. Stop yeah. panicking. There's gonna be there's plenty of paper towels and whatever else it, Purell back in the warehouse. All right. The faster you empty the shelves, it just takes them longer to fill it up. But if you went yesterday, you'd find out that's right. They have no bananas. Yeah. They had no bananas yesterday, but they'll yeah, have but them tomorrow. That, that, <laughs> so. Yeah, that's because that's because thousands of people showed up on one day and cleared the shelves. Right. Stop it. It's there. We, this is not Russia. We, we, the shelves are not empty. We're not, we, we have a supply chain that goes through warehouses all around the country. Just relax. You need toilet paper? Go out and buy it. Don't buy a year's worth. Right. That's that's my advice, my personal reaction to this. I think too many people are over overreacting. So, what kind of changes have uh, you made in your life, um, uh, given the misinformation that we have these days? You, you know, really nothing. 
to be real honest. I I don't go out to that many places. Um, when I go to the store, I'll still go to the store. I'll still go to the gym. Um, I, I'm mostly here in my office, and I'm working around the property on my Grove. Mm -hmm. uh, That's right. I forgot you're an arborist. I'm an arborist. <laughs> you love that word, <laughs> arborist. It's a citrus grove. Uh, I'll bring you some oranges, and I'll show you that it's a citrus grove. Do you have grove. any more of those little mandolins, or whatever they call them? Mandarin oranges, yeah. yeah. We, we just good. emptied one tree. We're at the end of the season, and I've got uh, maybe literally a dozen left on the other tree. So I will I'm tell, afraid I will tell you one, one, one thing that I am changing. What's my favorite restaurant? Oh, uh, you love Soup Plantation, I, the I, salad bar. Right. And I, I, love, I love to meet you there. Right, and we meet there. But quite frankly... Even Las Vegas is closing down their buffets. And I think it seems to make sense until we find out how communicable this really is. That Absolutely. Why would we want our food out of an open trough? Right, that, right. That, I think of the difference right. between a buffet. But see, my point is that, you know, yes, be smart about it. Don't go to an open buffet. They, I've always remembered years ago when they first put up those, what they called sneeze shields. Right. You know, it does, I guess it helps, but it doesn't prevent people with with virus on their hands from sharing everything right. but so instead of just just isolate yourself to the degree that you're not going to go to a, an open buffet but that doesn't mean you can't go to a nice restaurant yeah, and, and sit down and if, and if people are sneezing around you or if you have a relative who's ill since we really don't know what's going on like they've closed all the schools locally and yeah to me, that's smart because especially younger people, they say, well, uh, maybe they'll get sick. They won't even know it. It'll just be a cold and then they'll get over it, but they'll still be able to transmit it. So one of the that's big true. changes that we don't really understand yet is how easy it is to transfer from one person to another. Yeah, and I, I was at, at first, I was very against the idea of closing all these schools and things. Um, but it does make sense from the point of view of standard uh, procedure for isolating any communicable disease, and that is you quarantine. Yeah. And by taking the kids, uh, giving it three weeks off from school, what we're doing is we're allowing that that incubation time, which is theoretically 10 to 14 days, we're going past that incubation time so that whatever – viruses the kids might have had when they go back to school it's it will have either shown itself or they're going to be clear of it and it prevents the spread it doesn't stop the virus but it prevents the spread and as you point out kids are not the are not the target audience for this right. virus we are seniors are right so the only reason we need to isolate the kids quite frankly is to protect their grandparents right so so john i think uh Every couple of days, we ought to share some new things that we learn because we're learning so much. But uh, coronavirus.gov, which actually goes right to the CDC site. Yes, that's CDC actually, is. Forget about is any missteps with the testing and all the other nonsense. Yep. They have really great information. I just yep. went there uh, before we got on the air uh, again, and uh, I recommend that anybody go there for probably the most definitive information on how we can protect and ourselves. And they update it. They I mean, update it regularly. They update it all the time. And also, it would be great if anybody in our audience sends uh, us a note about their personal experiences. Uh, and whether it's mythology or not, it doesn't matter. It's what your right. experience and belief is. Sure. And, and opinions. We want right. their opinions. What are you doing? What are you not yeah. doing? Why are you doing it? You know, right. and, everybody's and different. Send it to info at celebratingact2.com. That's info at celebrating act the number two dot right. com. Right. And we'll we'll both get it. We we'll right. want to read this, so we'll be happy to communicate with you. So please so let, let us know. So anyway, until then I think Until then, wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. I've got a great sign off here. Until then <laughs> cover your cough. <laughs> wash sneeze into your, your hands. Sneeze into your elbow, will you? <laughs> wash your hands. Right. And uh, you don't have to avoid people, but avoid uh, big crowds that you're not you're not familiar with. You know, that's my attitude. Okay. Uh, but why don't we meet for lunch next week? For sure. But <laughs> okay, at, at maybe the not at, hotel, a at the Gypsy Hotel, the, you know, the, a normal place yeah. in San Clemente. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Okay. Everybody, stay healthy. We'll see you soon. 
stay healthy and take care of yourself and take care of the rest of society by not coughing out loud and, you know, getting sick. And you ain't getting anybody else sick. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.